I will be talking about scenography, which is all the physical stuff that uh, make up and surround the, the LARP you're designing. Um, it can be the, uh, the location you're playing in, the decorations you put up on that location, the uh, props you use, the costumes that uh, you make the players wear, as well as the light and the sound uh, of, the, of the location. Um, and the fader here goes from minimalism to 360. And it's sort of the amount of surrounding that you fill out with information for the players uh, about, about the, the world they're playing in. Uh, at minimalism, you will have a uh, completely empty space to, for the players to, uh, to play in. And at 360, you have some sort of enveloping uh, design environment for them to uh, do their, their play in. Uh, now the 360 end is not just, it's often used uh, in conjunction together with um, realism. But it's not only that, uh, you can also go for the um, abstraction simulation fader here and have a fully surrounding abstract environment. Um, for example, both, uh, I would suggest that 1943 is a 360 game because of the intense efforts in the, uh, in the costuming and the surroundings. But uh, Delirium is also a 360 game, even though it's much more abstract, but it's all around people. Um, while most of the games you play here is pretty low on, this, on, the, on the fader here, I think uh, the village is near the very bottom. Huntsville a bit uh, further up because of the tape lines and the clock and stuff. And White Death is somewhere in the middle by using the whole black box thing. Um, yes. The advantages of having a very full environment is that you have lots of information for the players. It's, uh, they know exactly where they are, what's going on, everything around them will be uh, concrete and part of the game. Um, and it's very impressive and it's often very immersive for the players to be in that environment. Um, the problem is that making these full surroundings is a very expensive uh, endeavor, both in time and money, uh, especially in time. And when you do it, it becomes highly specific. You can't really change around that much, uh, even in abstract games. You can't suddenly jump to another location. Um, and it's often very fragile. Uh, stuff will break uh, and not work, and you will have to fix that during the game, uh, and possibly have to um, break the whole illusion. While at the, the bottom here, the, uh, it's easy, it's quick. You can do it almost anywhere. Um, it's very robust because you don't have anything that needs to work um, for it. <coughs> and um, it's also usually very focused because you don't have that many distractions around. Um, it gives your players freedom to use their imagination instead of just sensing and seeing what's around them. And that can be a very strong uh, advantage in this. Of course, the less you actually have of physical surroundings, the more you need to narrate and instruct the players in what they're experiencing. Um, yes. Right. Now, um, you usually um, set this fader um, according to what you want to um, focus on in the game. Uh, if you want to make a, a specific uh, time and place very important, you move it upwards. But if it's more about uh, more abstract things or um, interactions, then you can move it low, lower uh, on the line. Um, most lab designers, even very experienced ones, tend to sort of drift upwards when they do projects because they get this idea of having an awesome prop or an actual castle and then they get stuck at the top and have to spend a lot of time and energy on actually having that castle or that ima amazing dragon, full-size dragon mobile. Um, that can be a problem because that eats up a lot of time and organizers and it's usually, it does contribute to the actual thing you want to focus on in, in, in the play, which is the interactions between the, the characters and players. Um, yes. Also the specificity, how specific you want to make the, uh, the LARP. Um, I'm going to use a metaphor here from my architecture business. Imagine a building. 
Um, and uh, you have this wonderful building that you need to, uh, to document. Um, you can take a photograph of it. You get the beautiful facade, the construction, the light, the surroundings, everything in the picture. It has, you can see a beautiful image of the, of, the, of the building. But what you actually wanted to know is, for example, how it's constructed. And you'd much rather do a drawing of it instead. A few sketch lines that says how the weight of the building is, is placed. Or maybe you want to explore the surfaces of the building, like this is brick, and here's concrete, and you do a drawing of that instead and ignore the construction. Um, so with less full information, more specific details come out and enter focus of the play. Um, Um, also, for educational LARPs, um, you want to uh, consider um, how you, how the, uh, what the game is about. If you're doing a game about a specific historical place and time, it's the more you, uh, immersive you make the environment, it's usually better to communicate that uh, element. But if you make it less uh, intense in scenography, it'll, um, it'll be easier to take around to classrooms or courses or put it up in different places. So, so yeah, um, yeah. Because uh, usually it's a sort of a cost benefit towards going up on the slider. Uh, how much energy you actually want to spend on this? And trust me, you will always spend more energy on making uh, sonography than you expect to. Uh, so please try to aim low uh, for your games. I think that's it. There's not much to say here. It's about. We, uh, we had a long discussion about this in the uh, expert group. Um, the thing is, it's not really about how realistic things are on this fader here. That's another fader that uh, Eric will um, present tomorrow and make a good job of. This is just a sort of an amount slider. How much scenography are you working with? Um, okay. Because if you consider um, white death versus delirium, mm -hmm. the delirium is obviously higher up on this one. But it's, they, both games are extremely abstract. Okay, so because it's, okay, yes, thank you. Can, can I comment on that? Because I don't know if this is useful for everyone, but since you are asking, I often view it a bit as the middle position where the fader is now. It's in a way uh, zero. And in some games you have negative sonography. You have a lot of stuff there that shouldn't be there. And then it goes down. And in the black box game, usually you have nothing. So it's on zero in a way, in the middle. Mm. I don't know if this is a useful way of thinking for you, but for some people I think that pr approach can be interesting. So. Okay. Just to, to exemplify that, white death in a classroom is lower than white death in a black box. Thanks. And you also have the sort of uh, shadow slider behind this one, which is the removal of the distractions that are not part of the game, that you can also work on. Which is Yes. Yes. This end is, is is experiencing, and this one is imagining. Uh, that that becomes the focus of the uh, scenography.